With so many issues that are seemingly cropping up on a daily basis, it's pretty easy to get focused on the negative, the problems that we face. Yet, there's one thing that is so essential, so crucial to our survival, that's often overlooked and simply not discussed in our community, and it could lead to our own demise. The good news is that it's not too late to correct your course and implement some very practical steps. Let's talk about it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. Uh, I wanted to start off by apologizing. I've been extremely busy the last several weeks. I just launched our new membership portal. Uh, the rollout went really well. There's a few glitches here and there that we worked through, and admittedly, I've had to catch my breath this week and focus on building with those in our new community portal that we just launched. And I haven't really gotten around to as many how-to videos lately on the channel. Uh, but we're lining those up. I've been trying to steer the channel more and more back into practical how-to videos, but once the war in Israel started up and then getting ready for our launch, I kind of had to veer back into another course. And so we're going to begin to put out more how-to videos over the next several weeks leading into the holidays and the beginning of the year. Now, as suggested by the title of this video, there's a mistake that we often make as preppers, and this is an issue that's rarely if ever discussed. Now, as preppers, if we're being honest, we tend to focus on the negative. We, let's be honest, it's easy to do it, especially with all the bad news and the issues that are swirling around us on a daily basis. And with the holidays right around the corner, I find myself pulling back for a moment. I try to do this from time to time, and I try to make sure that I'm seeing the big picture. And we've all heard the phrase, you know, he could not see the forest from the trees. And I think as we enter the holiday season, it's incredibly important that we take a moment, a pause if you will, and we try to consider what's most important right now. Why do we prepare? What motivates us? What's the driving force for what we do? And I think the answer is pretty clear. Hope. Hope that we can make it through no matter what comes next. Hope that we can rise to the occasion to help our family if harder times will befall us. Hope that despite all the bad news, all the negativity, that our efforts to prepare are not in vain. Again, it's incredibly easy to focus on the negative, let's be honest. And as we look across the preparedness community, we see plenty of doom and gloom. Yeah, I mean, it's what sells. And yeah, let's, let's just be honest here. As preppers, we obviously see the threats and we try to make ready. It's who we are and what drives us. And look, I don't, <clears throat> I don't live in a state of fear of the future despite what I see on the horizon. And there's a lot of things that I see on the horizon that personally concern me. But I do have a hope that I can prepare and make ready for my family and prepare them for whatever may come and the best I can. And this hope, this drive, this underlying current, it motivates me on a daily basis. But even more important than getting my affairs in order to ensure my family is taken care of even if there was some type of true SHTF scenario, will be holding to hope. And I think it's funny, but when was the last time you heard people discussing hope after a disaster? Again, we often focus so much on the what ifs, the what could happen scenarios, the EMPs, the nuclear war, that we often overlook the most important aspect of all, holding to hope to get us through. And there was a book that I read um, about 10 years ago, and the title of the book was Unbroken. They actually made a movie which admittedly was okay at best, but in the book, the author shares his experience as a B-24 bombardier and the ordeal that he went through after his plane crashed in the ocean. And only three of the crew on that flight that crash survived, and they were forced to live on a raft for... I want to say 47 days before they were found. But in the story, he shares how one of the crew members, there were three originally, one of them died after just a few days on the raft as he just simply gave up hope. And it was hope that allowed him and the other crew member that ultimately survived way past the normal time that most people could endure because they held to hope. In the preparedness community, we... We focus on the event, the what ifs, the possibility of the worst case scenario. And bad news is a thing that's often elevated in our community. It becomes the focal point. But let's be careful and ask ourselves, what is our focus and what are we prioritizing? Um, I was recently doing a live stream event in our community portal the other day when someone asked me, how do I avoid getting overwhelmed with all the bad news out there? And I've thought about that question a lot. 
Uh, and for me, the most valuable asset that I have is hope. And I know things will be difficult moving forward and will likely, I believe, and this is just the assessment I've come to, I think things will increasingly get worse in the coming years. I now know that even saying that out loud, it sounds a bit dark, but that's my assessment and the conclusion I've personally come to. And look, I always try to be a realist, but despite my concerns, I cling to hope. And without hope, what do we have? It's, again, it's funny because at some point after a major disaster, whether you call that SHTF or whatever name you ascribe to that event, you're giving up hope of our normalcy returning. You're giving up hope that services will be restored or rescue will occur. And even as you give up hope for these things, you have to hold on and cultivate hope for your future. You have to cultivate a hope that your life tomorrow will be even slightly better than today. So we've spoken about hope and how crucial it is for our survival. And I always try to do this thing in my videos where I try to point out some very practical things you can do to begin to implement. And I, most of my videos, if you watch them, I start with conceptual issues that we're you know, discussing. And then I try to pivot to, okay, we've talked about the issue. Now let's get down to real steps that you can take to prepare. And there are several things that you can do and not lose your sense of hope. You can, let's start out with the first one. Let's start out with discussing setting short-term goals. When you get serious about preparedness, I, I, look, it can be honestly overwhelming, especially if you're new to this community. There are a lot of things that we feel we need to get done. But my encouragement to you is to find easy wins. Can you start a food pantry? Can you expand it? Can you pick up another can of food the next time you go to the store? Can you start storing water in you know, your closet in the back just for that situation where water may not be available? And like most things in life, it's forming that momentum and getting things moving that allows us to develop hope that we can achieve our goals. The next point is to maintain balance. You can absolutely, uh, you absolutely have to get some things done, and there are some things that I would recommend you get in place before you start slowing down as a prepper. You're gonna die without food, water, or shelter. So it's important to have these essentials in place after a disaster. And when you have the core elements in place though, remember to rest. Spend time doing nothing if that's what you need to recharge and tackle tomorrow. Go fishing, write in a journal, read a book, draw some plans, balance the work of preparedness with the act of living. If you're part of a group, spend some time forgetting about the disaster and just enjoy the moment. I'm, look, I'm guilty of this. If you, <laughs> if you ask my wife, she'd uh, tell you that it's difficult for me to slow down. My mind tends to move nonstop. It's easy to get caught up in the what if scenario so often that, yeah, I forget to enjoy the moment in front of me. And that's something that I have to continue to work on. The next point is to commune communing with your higher power, sitting still in nature, staring at the clouds, touching grass with your bare feet, watching a sunrise or a sunset, and whatever it takes for you to connect. All of these can help to make you feel connected in the world. They can make you, or rather they can make the overbearing problems that you face seem less weighty. They can provide moments of inspiration and insight. And I would encourage you to take the time to let yourself connect to the world and just let your mind go for a period of time. We don't have, uh, well, we don't really talk about mental health a lot in this community, but I think it's important that we acknowledge this aspect of our life. Now, as I spoke about earlier in the video, sometimes, look, I can get hyper-focused with the act of preparing so much so that I have to pull back from time to time to see the forest from the trees and try to slow down to really take a moment to take care of myself. And I'm recording this video late on a Friday night. And again, I just launched the membership portal two weeks ago and I was preparing to do a series of videos next week for the Thanksgiving week. And I'll be honest with you, I just, I've got to take a second to step back. I, I will keep pushing myself usually into the point that I will burn out and I can feel I'm right on the edge of that. So at this moment, I've decided, look, I've got to take time off probably for the next week. And the channel, I'm hoping you all will still be here when Thanksgiving passes us. But the point is I need to take a step back. And I would encourage you to periodically review and make that decision. The next point is stay connected. If you are not alone after disaster, let's talk about a real disaster scenario. You've got to maintain a sense of community with others that are affected by the disaster. You will likely be sharing with the task and responsibilities. You're going to be supporting one another emotionally, and you're going to work as a team to increase your chances of survival. <clears throat> Human connections, they can be a powerful source of hope. Um, 
again, we are social beings. And I know in this community, it's easy to get into the lone wolf mindset. But let's be honest, especially if you're like myself that lives in a suburban area with others around me, that sense of community and connecting and helping is going to be so critical either before or after disaster. Let's move to the next point, talk about cult, uh, cultivating a positive mindset. I would encourage you to focus on the positive aspects of your situation, no matter how dire it may seem. Even after a major disaster, practicing gratitude for the resources that you do have, the skills that you possess, and the opportunity to rebuild will be critical. And the key is to keep a positive mindset because it can provide a sense of hope and resilience. Um, one of the first videos I did on my channel, and I think it was the first video where I actually showed my face. If you go back in my library, I share lessons that I learned from mountain climbing. Uh, I grew up, I used to mountain climb a lot during the summer. I would spend my teens with mountain expeditions in Colorado and New Mexico. It was an amazing time. And I've done several mountain climbing expeditions. And I can tell you upfront that a group can lose mor its morale very quickly when you have someone that's constantly complaining. Uh, Mountain climbing, even when I was young, was not an easy endeavor. But I've been on, I was on expeditions where you just have one person that starts complaining and it just spreads. And your attitude really is everything. And I would encourage you to guard it because you can either bring life to a group or you'll bring death. The next point is to learn a new skill. Do you have a chart of 100 different knots? Or have you gone on a YouTube video and watched videos that show how to do different knots? The DIY prepper on his channel, he recently did a video about tying knots. You should go check it out. All you need is a length of string or rope and you can start developing a skill set. Well, if you have it, now's your time to learn them all. <laughs> and what better time to put them to practical use, especially if there's a disaster. And look, learning how to build shelter, forage for food, purify water, and provide primary medical care, it can boost your confidence and hope for the future. And just developing those skills, let's be honest, if you know you have a skill and something happens, you're not going to be freaking out, right? Because you've taken the steps to prepare yourself. The more self-sufficient that you can become and the skills you develop, the brighter your outlook and the more confident you will, you will become. The next point is to plan for the future. It can be challenging to imagine a future when things around you currently don't look so optimistic. Encourage, I would encourage you to create a vision for what your life could be like. This is something I have to work on all the time because my mind, if I let it go, it can slide into the negative very quickly. And I have to proactively make that decision on a daily basis of what I want my life to become. And I take steps based on where I want to be. I start with a dream, I start with a goal, and I develop steps to move there. And like I always tell people, if you have a dream without a plan, or rather if you have goals without a, a plan, you're just dreaming. So develop that goal, set a goal, and set places, or rather set actions in motion that will get you to that goal. You need to create a vision for what your life could be like. And I, I'm not trying to get into new age, you know, positive thinking, but there, there's a lot to be said about where you allow yourself mentally to go toward. And if you focus on the negative, you know, you're going to drive yourself in the ground. You've got to consider the steps that you need to take to achieve your goals. I'll repeat that again. Decide where you want to be and set those steps to get to your goal. This long-term perspective, it can provide hope and it can provide motivation when times are good and after a major disaster where you will need that to survive and thrive. You've got to keep your mind busy thinking about other things that does it, you know, so that your mind doesn't wander to the dark places. And I, again, that's my whole mindset with preparedness is I can see where things may go in the next few years, but I don't tend to focus on that too much. I've already made that decision. Again, you know me, I'm a very, uh, I try to be a realist about things and I can see what I believe is coming on the horizon. And I've decided, look, these are the steps I have to take to prepare so that I will be ready for those moments. Remember what Seneca said, difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. All right, let's move to the next point. You need to engage in exercise. Clearing your head with exercise, deep breathing, stretching, all these things, they can energize and allow you to shake off the doldrums. I personally currently lift weight three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. I go to a gym, I work out with a trainer, uh, I've been lifting and it's, I've been making a lot of progress. Uh, I do cardio six days, five to six days a week, hop on the bike for 20 to 25 minutes, run 20 to 20, uh, 25 minutes, try to keep my BPMs at 150, I monitor on my watch. and. 
I've been doing this for two and a half months consistently now, day after day, and I'm already seeing some pretty dramatic results in my stamina, my strength, but it took that initial decision and those actions to get to where I am today. And I push my body so that after disaster, I'll be ready. And after disaster, you're not going to want to engage in overly vigorous exercises. That's not the time after disaster to say, hey, I'll get on a workout program that could result in an injury or medical care. But the point is, is in these good times that we live in, you've got to keep your body active. As we all know, especially as we age, your body doesn't stay in neutral and neither should you. Now, look, I would encourage you to practice one or all of these so that you don't lose hope. Remember, Hope is a very powerful motivator and it can help you overcome even the most challenging of circumstances. And by focusing on your abilities, your support network, and your potential for recovery, you can maintain hope and work toward a better tomorrow. Now, I feel like this was a very important message in light of recent events that are playing out around the world. And yes, there's plenty of problems right now, but you have the ability to get your affairs in order and not only survive what's coming, what's in front of us, but to thrive. I always enjoy your feedback in the comments section. I always learn from you all. There's times where I'll go, I'll come back six months after a video is released and I'll just sort through the comments. And I've learned a lot. And I always appreciate your feedback, your ideas of what you think would help to develop and cultivate hope, how you can build a community, what you've learned. I encourage you to post that below because I think others that would go into the comments section would also enjoy it. As always, stay safe out there.